Hello, I'm Mixed Mars and Man, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be working on this lovely little 19, uh, 2003, I thought it was older than that, um, Atco Balmoral 14 SE, which stands for uh, Electric Start, uh, ES, sorry, Electric Start. Uh, picked it up off of eBay for the shocking price of £18.50. Um, it's got a Tecumseh engine on top, which is not the best, and I was torn with the idea of putting a Kawasaki on here. However, if I can get the electric start to work and the engine starts okay, then why bother? Why rock the boat? Um, but we shall see, because it, you know it's, it's in a little bit of a rough shape. It's, it's, it's not the, the normal Tecumseh engine that I see. This is a different cowling on here, um, but it is what it is. Um, I have had the machine running to a fashion, uh, it was sold as spares or repair. I'll take the airbox cover off. I'll try and get it to start just on just on normal choke first. It did actually pull over in the last video I did. Uh, throttle's on here, that needs to be moved back over here. So it starts up and then dies. Fuel starvation. So I'm gonna flood the carby. It's got the Delorto carb on here. Flood that carb, give it another go. And that's all we're getting. So it's definitely carburetor fuel starvation issue. I prefer these engines to have the Tilliston carburetor, which I have spares, but I am gonna try and save this carburetor first before we just, just dismiss it and throw it in the trash. Hopefully we can save it. If we can, it'd be good to go. Um, it's got power drive and it's got uh, the um, cylinder, but I have already found that the, the, both the drive and the cylinder are already at full extension. So pretty much it's trying to drive all the time. It doesn't like to push forward. Um, and as soon as you start it up, the cylinder likes to cut in as well. So we've got all these little problems. Throttle to sort out, driving cylinder to sort out, starting to sort out, um, all that sort of stuff, electric start to sort out. It won't all be done in one video, but I'm gonna try and at least get it up and running, get all the belts and cylinders adjusted, get the throttle put back to where it should be, and then we will know roughly where we are with the machine, and then we make the choice. Do we swap it for a Kawasaki? Some people are saying yes straight away, because it's just the way, way to go, but it may require uh, cutting the cowling, uh, cutting and welding the, the drive shaft or even changing the cowling. I don't have a SK cowling. So we might just go with it as is, okay? Uh, considering I only paid £18.50 for it, I've got nothing to lose. So let's get on and do that. If this is your first time watching Mixed Mars and Merman, hit the subscribe button, whack the old bell, sit the notifications to all, that way you'll be told next time I upload another video. So without further ado, let's get down dirty. Let's get this rather lovely 14 um, ES electric start um, at Cobar Mall up on the bench. Car be off, clean, car be on, test. Right, Echo Bound Moral now up on the bench. Okay, um, now there's one thing I've noticed here of it this fuel line goes up and down. I don't quite like that, not really. Uh, that fuel hose I like it to go down all the time, but uh, that's not the end of the world. I'm going to drain the fuel out of this one because I'm not sure how long the fuel's been in there. Um, I believe this was, um, this belonged to an older gentleman, as they normally do. Um, let me turn that fuel off because it has got a bit of a weep to it. I don't know if that's actually weeping through the fuel hose or through the little tiny plastic cap at the back. That's through the plastic cap at the back, in it? Someone's been in it. Well, this, might be, this might have to be uh, a carburetor change because these like to leak out the side of these little tiny seats here. Let me put that on there. And I'm going to struggle in the UK to find a part for that. But we should see. So I'm going to drain the fuel out what fuel there is in there, and it looks like water too. <clears throat> Undo that, and I'm not getting a lot of flow, Joe. The fuel tap's turned on, and that's how much flow I'm getting. And I don't think you can see that. Let me try and bring it over, just so you can see it a bit better. Take it off the old perch, and bring you over. <coughs> oh, I'm getting there, I'm trying to do it one handy whilst not spilling fuel. So that's how much flow, Joe, I'm getting out of that carby. Right, nothing, and, there's water, and there is fuel in the tank, okay? So we're getting nothing fuel related coming out of the uh, out of the old tank. It's not easy to do it one handed, Mick. It really ain't hard, that's it. Right, here you go. So let me just check the fuel situation. I did put fuel in there last night. Yeah, fuel in there. So I need to take that tank off, take that, all that hose off. That can all come off and be cleaned. That's number one. So that could be a contributing factor as to why this machine don't want to run. <laughs> It's all blocked up in there too. Okay, I'll sort that out in a bit. So, uh, 
on top of a carb, this little tiny um, clip here on the back of, the, of a carb, they, they do move, these are all Delorto style carbies, they do move and they do like to weep. Hopefully mine's not cracked, but we shall see. If I want to remove that, see how that's dripping now, see? It's starting to go. Um, I'll just put a rag underneath that in case it decides it wants to start flowing. There's not a lot of fuel in there, but uh, it's enough. Um, right, on a 3.8, I think there's a 3.8 on them, I can't remember the top of my head. I think there are 3.8s. 3.8s on the back, there's a little tiny nut there. And we're gonna just crack that open. And you can spin them off the back. Just loosen it for now. And then turn the machine around. And there's one on the other side here to do. Just here. Loosen that one off. Now I can pretty much guarantee, pretty much, right? Because these carbs are so simple. A darn good carburetor clean will get these machines at least running. Maybe hunting, but they, they, it, it will run. I'm doing a little tiny, two associated nuts on those. I've got a little tiny tray to put them in. And then gently just rock that carby, there's a gasket behind there, move the bolts out of the way, and then you just want to remove it off of this um, throttle arm, which is a bit of a fluke, turn the carburetor around to do it and tip it over. All right. But you want to do it very gently because you don't, want, you don't want to drop anything or take photographs of where all the stuff was. There it goes. And then just, just leave that down there. Let that sit. Put that bolt back in there so you don't lose it. Boom. Now you can't just throw a Tillerson carburetor straight on here because the exhaust matter, the, the inlet manifold is a different size, right? And don't fit. So there's our carby. Let's take that apart and uh, see what we can't do with regards to trying to get that cleaned up because um, I've got a feeling it's absolutely yucky in there. So let me get sorted out. I'll be back to you in two seconds. Right, carburetor now off the machine. Uh, it's a nice old carby, genuine as well, which is good. Uh, proper decumpsy carburetor. There you go, it says so just there on the tin. Um, we're going to remove the air, fil uh, the air filter itself off. It's going to be a quarter. A couple of bolts inside here, see? Just inside here. Just trying to get the camera out of the way. Fish them out. Undo them. And that can become a gasket on the back here. Don't lose a gasket. That can become our new little our little parts pot for all our bits and our bobs. All right, put that out of the way. Now I have two other bits and bobs somewhere else. Where do I have? I have two little tiny nuts somewhere. There we are. Let's not lose them. Let's put them in the old bits and bobs. Lovely. Right. A uh, quarter. Should be a quarter. Goes on the. Uh, on the back of the, uh, the bowl. That's a 7 16 so ain't no good. Man or beast. Half inch. Half inch gone here. I'm gonna crack that little tiny bowl nut open. Nice and gently, it's brass, nice and gently. Tip up on its side, because we wanna try and see what's going on inside this carb, you see? We're gonna take that out. There'd be a jet inside there and all. Tip it out. Yeah, see, look, see, look, what dirt, look. Bits of dirt in there, that's no good. That's all we'll be clean. It's not, it's not bad, it's not bad. For how old the machine is, it's not shocking. Owen looks to be okay. And then we've got a little tiny, in my, in my dog barking. Pip, come on. Pip. Pip, go on your bed, please, come on, here, here. Come on. Pippy, where are you? In your bed, oi, here, come on here, leave that cat alone. In your bed. Lay down. Good girl. We'll remove the float pin out. Nice and gently. Take that out. Take the float out. There's a needle as well. Good. And there's an emulsion tube in there. Now those emulsion tubes, they do come out, right? But I'm in the UK. And getting one of those red emulsion tubes are absolute pigs. So I'm going to leave mine in, okay? You just can't get them. It's as simple as that. Now, I have tried, but most people, you got them, in, you got them on um, um, eBay. It'll say, yeah, you can get it, $8.99. And it'll say £25 shipping from the States. You can't get them here. You just can't get them. So I'm leaving mine in. Take out this mixture screw, that can come out. There's a little tiny jet inside there as well in a minute. So that is your carb out, taken apart and done, right? 
Now we have got a very, very small little tiny um, jet just inside here, inside this mixture. So once again, I'm gonna reach for my micro drill bits, which will be packed away. Can I pack them away? What am I doing them? Uh, I had them out just two seconds ago and I was doing another, another carby about 10 minutes ago. I'm sure I put them away. Here there we are. I did. Right, smallest drill bit again. And all we're gonna do is just gonna fit that into there. Let it fit in there lovely. There it goes, in it goes. And just just rim that one out. Nicely, nicely. There's a little bit of sideways pressure. Good. Bit of GT85. I'm just gonna put it on the end. I just wanna see it run out the side of that hole just there. You'll see it in a minute. Yeah, it's coming. Too close to my new camera, get it covered. Come out the other side as well. Yeah, lovely. Good blast through the centre. Put that to one side, that's good. And then you've got a little tiny one here on this bowl nut. Now there's a hole. Should be a hole on the side there. Okay, that's generally not the issue, but let's have a little look. It is slightly restricted, slightly. So I'm just gonna get my gas tip cleaners. All I'm gonna do is find one that fits, that one, and then run it through the side there like so. It comes out the other side, and it is actually there you go, a bit of dirt, right in the end of my finger, just there, okay. So there's some dirt in there. There could be no there's dirt in there. I'm gonna get my thumb drill. I might have got upper size, just to get the right size for this. Let's go up a couple, let's go up two. It's quite a big size hole down in the center of there. That's gone in. I might just go a, a touch bigger. Just find the one which just about fits. You don't want to force it. It fits lovely. Okay, so keep going up. Let's go up two. This is the one I use for, for quantums. And that don't fit, so I'm not gonna put that in there. So one down. That fits lovely, All right. There you go. So just a bit of sideways pressure again. Clean the sidewalls up of that jet. Get rid of all that old ethanol. I'm happy with that. Now there will be one more hole you will scream it, so you missed it. I didn't. One more hole, just over on here somewhere. Just here. No hole, just there. There it is. All right, clean that one out as well. And there isn't one on the other side. See, you all thought I missed it, didn't you? You all scream, ah, you missed one. Ah. I know what you like. Right, now, if I can go into there, and you'll still see that run out of the bottom. Lovely. Okay, let's go both holes, yeah. And then run it through that hole just on the side there, there. And it's coming out the top. Beautiful. So that's that one. Uh, do I run through there? Yeah, I do run through that, yeah, that one's done. So now I've got a couple of holes on the carb to do. Open the choke up, and the hole down in there. Where's that through? Beautiful, back through again. And then all the way down through the middle of the motion tube, right through the centre. You can check by checking inside the carb to see it coming out the top of your motion tube. Yeah, it's coming out of there, lovely. There's plenty in there because I'm not removing that. Look at that, it's running through the absolutely beautiful. Out through there. And there's a hole here, took the mixture to screw out, didn't we? In here. In there. Blocked. That is blocked. You can feel it's blocked. There it goes running now. And that's coming up through the, through, through the front of the car there, outside there, see it? So that was blocked. I can feel it. She's running now. Right, now I'm going to get my air compressor. That might kick in because I'm a bit low on the old air. So if it does kick in, I'll turn, I'll turn the camera off, right? 
all I'm going to do is just going to compress every hole on this carby. Now, when you're going to do the seat, go careful because there's a seat in there, so go through that way, not that way. All right. I told it kick in, that made the dog jump and all. Pip, come sit down, darling. Pip, come on. Pip, in your bed. Come on, good girl, in your bed. Good girl. Sit down. She hates a compressor. Now, right, anywhere where there's a hole, we're just going to blast that. Down the side there I want to get into, just in there. Down through there as well. Right, that is Carby cleaned, okay? Got, I just tied my hands up because my hands are now filthy covered in bits and pieces. Let's get a few, uh, a few wet wipes. So the big question is, did I buy myself a nice little Atco Bow Moral 14 ES for £18.50 that potentially all it needed was a carburetor clean. Now, we'll only be doing checking the oil, all that, all that good stuff. I may even take the cylinder out of a cylinder sharpened, all that sort of good stuff, yeah? So, because there's plenty of plenty of room there. Because I only paid £18 for the uh, for the machine. If I paid good money for this machine, I'd have wanted that all done. But you can see up here, look, already, just the, just the, uh, the cylinder um, is at is it, is it maximum, maximum uh, um, stretch. I, think, I don't think that's right. But we're back on my carb. So I just want to check that car bowl. It's not, and I don't want to upset that seat. You know, it's a little seat there. Look, that wasn't leaking. Just there. I don't want to upset that. But I'm not going to touch that. All right, I'm going to dodge round it. Just going, to, just going to clean this carb up with a, with a like a wet wipe, if you like, and try and get all the debris out of there as best I can. There's a little tiny bit of corrosion in there. See that? No, that's part of it. That's good. Leave it be then. Right. So just, I'm not, I'm not going to disturb that too much. Now, I have done a video on these before where these little tiny twiddlers, fiddlers, whatever you call them, they do leak, okay? They do leak. And I've actually taken mine out. Now, you can buy brand new ones. And I've actually got a, uh, I bought some not so long ago from a company. I can't remember who I got them from now. Uh, where are they? Mickle Mouse. There they are. Uh, here's a needle and here's a, a new seat from them. They're from Small Engine Parts to Company Webs. Uh, there's a part numbers from there if, if your one is leaking, okay? So you can you can put new ones on. I don't have great success with them, if I'm honest. So what I do sometimes, I take these out, and I get the aluminium soldering, and I just solder it shut, get it gone. Because you don't need it. Don't need it at all. Don't need it. Uh, I, just, I just solder mine up. As long as they're, uh, as long as they're liquid tight, you're good to go. Um, right, so I'm happy with the whole carb. Right, let's put this... Um, needle back on. Now this needle, it's got a little tiny spring on there, a little tiny spring just behind my finger. It needs to go through that little tiny groove on that on that float. So just slide it in through the groove like that and it'll hold itself up like that. And you can balance it into your carb and onto there. Okay. And let's stick our float pin in. Set your Set it all up. My dog is, is yapping at the, at the cat. My dog has decided it hates the cat. Right, um, so on this one here, the, the flood goes around the back. Just seat it down nicely over the O-ring and get your uh, your main jet. Just loosey-goosey that up for now. That's a half inch one. I'm not gonna do it up with a, with a socket. And you've got to put your mixer screw in as well. Yeah, see, you thought I forgot, didn't you? See, you thought I forgot. Now, that fuel mixer screw, that was done all the way up, okay? That was well seated. Now, that may not be right. That might be why this machine wasn't running. Pippi, stop your noise. Don't need to hear, hear you yapping, eh? Hey? What's up with you? You're not missing out on anything. You're in the shade, out of the way of the sun. Woof. She goes like that. Brr. Right, snip that out. See, so you hear that? Brr. She went. She does that. <laughs> She's a funny little dog, she is. Right. Okay, well done. Car beat done. Now, this does move, okay? That might weep. I'm trying to leave it alone best I can. Um, 
and uh, we go from there. So I've got, I'm quite happy with that all in, all in total. Um, so we'll get it back on the car beat, or back on the machine now, get it refitted, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we're now back, which is kind of great, right? Um, carburetor go on first. So just bring in your throttle control. And it's got to go on this, on this back one nearest the, uh, the fuel intake. And you've just got to turn it around to its side. It is a bit of a pickle to fit it, but get it in and up and then just get it fitted in. Hold up two bolts around the back and just seat it in place like so. Right, now get your two, your two three eight nuts. Grab all your nuts and just start them off. Let's get them rocking and rolling. That's good. Oh, I've got a little tiny 3 8 Spaniard here. I'm going to nick them up. The problem is, is don't give you enough enough room to um, negotiate um, doing them back up because they like to spin. Now what's that on the back of there? Sometimes they give you a, a little Phillips on the back of there sometimes. Is there a Phillips on the back of there? No, there's not on these ones. So sometimes you find when you do the nuts up, the little tiny bolt at the back will spin, which mine is. I can't quite hold it. So you get a little socket on the back of that. Or what you can do is you can get a flat headed screwdriver and wedge it down in wedge it down in there and then do it up like that. That's what I sometimes do. Like that, you see. And that does does a good a job. Like that. There's a little trick for you. That's free. Um, let's do this one up. At the back. It's an absolutely glorious day again down on the old south coast again. We have been absolutely sport, but it's not doing much good for the lawn, I must admit. It is cooking your grass. If you want about hose pipe band next, that'll be the next thing. That'll be the next thing. You'll be taxing the amount of grass you've got. Um, right, now that's all done, I want to uh, I can fit my fuel loop, my fuel pipe on the bit, no problem. There. I've got a gasket to go on here, a little gasket, put it on the back of your airbox. And you've got them two little tiny quarters. They're absolute picks to get in the back of here now, because you've got quite a way to go all the way down to get them in. So let me just put my gasket on, I'll do it off camera, and I'll show you what I'm doing in a minute, all right? I can't, I've got to try and tip this thing all the way up so I can see what I'm doing without tearing that gasket. I don't want to be making a new gasket. That takes time, making gaskets. That's how I actually started my small, in, small engine trade, was making gaskets. That was my job at 11 years old. Sat in a dark old dingy boathouse making gaskets for Stuart Turner inboards. They were the days. £15 a day and a free lunch. It's worth every penny. Put in the comment section what it was, what your first job was, right? And how much you was paid a week or a day. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Right, let me just whiz that. I'm just trying to get this, this gasket in, guys. That's what I'm trying to do. Let me just try and whiz that in. Just trying to get the bolts all lined up and then whiz these bolts down and it, it suck that gasket down. See, that's what I'm trying to do. That's better. Right, now that's on, I can now offer that onto Carby. You can still buy the, the air filters for these, they're still available. And not just any old bit of foam would do because it's different courses of foam. And if you put a too thicker one in there, it'll hunt and surge like a pig because it can't suck the air in. Now the rest of the air filter is actually outside in, in a grass box. So I left it outside. Um, I'll check your oil whilst we're here. See what that's doing. Now generally it's pretty good because old boys, an old boy would have had it. Let's see what it's doing. It's black as you're at, I know that. Oh, she is black. Now they say, um, bottom of threads. <laughs> I say too much oil. That's <laughs> what I say. Absolutely full. Look at that, he fell up to the brim. <laughs> right, let's get a bit of oil out of there. <laughs> oh, 
I ain't no good for nothing. So to take it all out, just take the dipstick out and then tip this little this little bad boy onto its bum and takes them all out. All right. <laughs> she she overfilled. And it's proper old oil and all. Ah, Nora. That was a lot of oil. Well, I've taken about 500 mil out. <laughs> he filled her right up. Let's just try that. That's a little bit more like it. Let's screw it in because it's a flathead. Screw it in. Look, 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 you couldn't have made that up any better. Look, you couldn't have made that up. Look. Absolutely bang on the mark, but it is dirty oil, so we'll be taking it all out in a bit. But um, I just want to run it first, so yeah, I took quite a, took quite a bit of oil out of there. That's how much oil I took out. And so don't and bear in mind, it's only a little engine. That's how much oil I took out of there. Look, oh, fill it up with oil. That's it. So that definitely wouldn't have helped. A um, little bit of an oil spill on there, but that's why right. we can clean it all up later on. So we've got the correct amount of oil in. Um, and carburetor has been cleaned up, put the fuel hose on. I'll do that now. So I'll blow that fuel hose through, make sure we've got a decent um, flow going through that pipe. It has got a tap on it, which means it's got a tap on it. Generally, they like to uh, leak. So, uh, which way around do we go? So let's go up onto there, push that one up onto that, and then let's gently. Gently, gently push that onto there. I'm going to put my clamps on. No, I don't like that. I'm going to turn that around. I have it going sideways. I don't think that's helping. Having an uphill, having an uphill gradient for your fuel on a gravity-fed tank. Let's have it on a nice little slant. Right, now this, this might leak, right? But if it do, it do. I'll just change the carb for the tiller But I want to see the machine run, so we're now done. Um, I'll leave the spark plug in, because I know it, do, it does fire over. So let's get it outside on the lawn. Enough talking, Mick. Let's get it looked at, and then we'll go from there. And as I always do, I try to get the camera running, and then go and get the mower. Because that just sort of proves that I've not tried to fire it up, right? So I don't like to do that. I'm not one of these geezers. It does YouTube videos and fires machines up um, without uh, showing you guys first. That dog's, that dog's barking at the cat again. Can you old cat another hard time? Yep. Right, let's grab that. I think the petrol's outside in the shade because we're out of petrol. Piffy, leave that cat alone. He don't like you. I can sort of understand why and all. Wait, who are you barking at? Right. Who are you barking at? Hmm? Missus? Come here. Come here. Come on. What's the matter? Hmm? What's up? What's the matter with you? Why are you barking? Hmm? You're all right. There's no one in the garden, darling. It's just us. That's mummy's home. Right, let's uh, let's put a bit of juice and see if we get any fuel leaks. Can I get a few yet? Yeah. I think she's barking at next door but one's dog. That's what she's barking at. So put a decent bit of fuel in. It's about half a tank there. Or just under actually, I think that way fast. There you go. Right, there's a good good amount of fuel. Put that in the shade out of the way, Mick. <coughs> just want to let that run down. Before we um no someone's actually put a that's actually got a um a petrol can. There's a there's a one for you, look. I've not seen that before. You know your five five litre petrol cans. They might they might be a good replacement for your fuel tanks. Because they're vented. Right. So any fuel leaks? None. On to choke. It's all that way. No air filter in here yet. I have also fixed the um, the throttle control. That wasn't that wasn't working right. That was all um, all over here. I've taken that off and just just put it back where it belongs, and it seems to be working. So we'll, we'll try that. Let's we'll start. No battery for that, so I can't test that. So on to choke. Bit of rabbit. Let's start it. Let's see what happens, shall we? 
and there's a correct amount of, correct amount of oil too. All right, let's get a bit more revs in. Let's try again. Oh wait, Pip. Shush. Oh wait. Right, there you go. See how that cylinder's running? Now, I haven't actually asked for the cylinder to be cut in yet. It drives. So let me let me now it shut off. No, so what's adjusting? I can't shut it off. So I've got to adjust that so that actually shuts off. Uh, where's the switch? This. Yeah, it's not. It's not allowing me to shut it off. The actual switch is actually uh, might be, might just be dirty actually. Oh, there you go. No, what's well, this one's adjusting? I'll show you that in a minute. I'll show you that now. I've got to adjust that. It won't shut off, and that's not good. Pimp here. Not having dogs near moving, moving machinery. See how, see how that cylinder's running. Dangerous for dogs, that is. Right, so around the back here. Get away, dog. Go on. Right here. See that just there? That should cut off. If I just touch that, yeah, try and cut off. Right. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to speed it up a touch. Right, and I'm going to bend that bit all the way in. Try and bend that down. Now that's enough. No, I won't go. It doesn't go back far enough. That was adjusting. But I can shut it off like that for now. But I'll adjust it, adjust the throttle so that um, you can adjust it here, so that um, it will go all the way down. It's very simple to do. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But I want to grab myself a 10 mil, 11 mil, something like that, and I want to adjust the cylinder so that at least the machine. Actually, the cylinder won't, won't spin unless I ask it to. Right, so now I'm going to set this up so that uh, when I ask for it to stop, it will do. Now, it's not actually far off in the grand scheme of things, okay? It's literally um, just a hair's breadth away from making that, making that circuit. So, this is a, uh, currently on, on just above idle, okay? There's full throttle. That's idle. So I've got a bit of a slip going on there somewhere. That's slipping uh, for some reason. And then we come down to, to idle and turn off and it's not quite there. All right, see how this piece here, that, those two bits should be touching, okay? And they're not quite. So all you want to do is set your machine to idle and then with a Phillips screwdriver or eight mil, just loosen that off. Okay, and then adjust your cable so that this pushes down and makes the circuit on the bottom. So now it's now touching. You can now see that plate there is now touching. So it's gonna come back off a touch. So that's where your cable wants to be. That's off there, okay? So I'm gonna do that little tiny screw back up. Now, the only thing is it may not want to rev up as high. Okay, but we shall see. So now, when I ask it for flat out, so that's uh, flat out, idle, and turn off. That should now all work, okay? So hoping we now shut the machine, because it's important to be able to shut the machine off, guys, really important, yeah? You don't want to be mucking about with uh, machinery you can't turn off. So that's that bit done. And the next little job I want to do is adjust that cylinder. Okay, so we're now uh, side view. I've, under, I've just loosened off the four, the four bolts on each corner and your inspection plate will now come off. Oh man, yeah, is, that cover's not been off in a while. Let's check the pulleys, they're okay. Yeah, okay, there's a lot, there's a lot of belt debris on here because the cylinder's always been asked to, 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 be, to be turned on and you can see that's already under a lot of tension already, okay? So literally, all I wanna do, I now wanna ask the cylinder to come off. 
So I'm just going to loosen that little 10mm nut up and then hand screw in this one, which will release the tension on this pulley. Now, let's do a bit too much tension on there, Mick. There it goes. Now we're starting to get a bit of movement out of it. That cylinder should only be operated as and when you ask it to, and both the drive and cylinder have been well adjusted. See how it now free spins? See that? That's what you want. You want just, just a free spin. So I'm going to try that there. Now as long as, when I ask the cylinder to come in, there's enough tension on that belt. So if I activate the cylinder now, which is this one, you see it moves forward, and that's putting tension on. That's just about, no, I might just want a bit more. Maybe just a bit. Maybe a new belt would also help as well. I'm going to wind it out of touch, just to put a bit more tension on there. Try that. That's better. See how, see how it's got it? That's better. And see how it spins on its own. So now, if I fire this machine up, by rights, this machine should now start, and then the cylinder shouldn't move. Okay, let's move this into the sunshine. The height control is tipped all the way forward on this too. Oh my lord, that's cutting low. Let's adjust that height control back up out of the way a bit. That was right on the deck, that was. I think it's fair to say this machine, it's, 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 it's been well used, but I think it has been a little bit of neglect with it as well. No cleaning off, nothing. So it could be that it didn't belong to you to an older person, because generally the older people, they look after them more. Right, let's bring it out to the old sunlight, let's make sure you're in shot. I'm going to check that cylinder and see if that cylinder will actually uh, move as and when I want it to rather than just doing what it wants to do. So let's, uh, let's try and start with that no choke first. See what it does. Oh, is that cylinder moving? No, not. Now it is. Off. Right, I'm going to tighten up slightly now, just by asking that to come back out. A bit of tension, about there, try that. That's better. I would like a little bit more rev out of that and all would be nice. Idle's nice, does it shut off? Shuts off. So now it stops, starts, runs, cylinder all works as it should do. And I might just adjust that fuel mixture too. Take a little run, you know, that, drives, that drives a bit fierce and all. Out of way dog. Out of the way, dog! The front roller wants a bit of uh, greasing up. And a bit more rev too. So there you go. It all wants tightening up, it's just loose. Everything's loose. So the cylinder now doesn't spin um, all the time. Really important that is, really, especially if you've got kids or animals. There's no tension on there at all. I can touch that with my hand. You can see here, look, that pulley is not spinning. See that pulley, if I push it over, nothing. Okay, so, so we're good. I could go a little bit more on that maybe. It definitely wants a few more revs though. It's not quite revving high enough. So a bit more cable adjustment needed. I'm happy with it, all in all. If a machine costs £18.50, it wants a new cover, just here. 
Uh, the front roller, I don't know if they've got bearings in them front rolls, I don't think they have. Let me know if they have, I can't remember. Uh, that one's looking at, greasing up maybe. Uh, new belts, definitely, definitely new belts. But apart from that, yeah, she runs nice. Sold as spares or repair, non-running machine. And with a half an hour of it being over here at a mixed mower's place, we've got a 14 ES. Yeah, it wants just a bit more revs, that's all that wants, just a touch, not a lot. To be fair, it's not working very hard. They don't have to work hard either. I reckon that'll cut too. Slow that down. See if it'll cut. Try that. Just run a bit of longer grass. Yeah, that's cutting. Oh yeah, that's cutting. That, that noise you can hear, that is actually the front roller making that noise. Yeah, that's cutting. Nice. Idols. Shuts off. So what I might do, I might just adjust where the cutoff is, move that slightly, so it just, just gives me a bit more revs and a slightly higher tick over. It's just fine tuning and should be good. But there you go, £18.50 um, at Cobalt Mall, electric start, not running, sold as spares or repair, half hour, 20 minutes, carburet clean, a few minor repairs like to the throttle and to um, the cables, and up and run, 2003 machine there. I'll do ya.